so my name is uh, Junbo Zhao. I'm uh, currently a assistant professor at uh, uh, Zhejiang University uh, in China. Uh, so <laughs> there's a lot of accident last night where our first author who was planning to present a paper and she had a little uh, accident, uh, mostly regarding the quarantine and, and the COVID stuff uh, that's happening right here in China. Uh, so she uh, has to be absent today. Um, so I basically pick up the job of this uh, presentation from last night. Um, but uh, I will say, uh, I will uh, give, uh, I'll do the best I can. Uh, I'll try to give uh, a general outline uh, or, and the, the motivation of, of, this, of, 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 uh, of this paper. And, uh, but if you are interested in the details, um, I'm clearly not the right person to ask. Um, I will uh, recommend you to uh, send an email to us or, or, or we can keep it offline and we're more than happy to answer any question and uh, uh, or do a further discussion. Okay, uh, so the title of our paper is a sampling based learning framework for uh, big databases. So this work is uh, pretty much joined from uh, Alibaba and uh, ZJU. Uh, wait. Okay, uh, so I'll start with the background. So uh, the goal of this paper is uh, trying to uh, make a little uh, progress towards the autonomous database. So what is an autonomous database? Um, so the goal of that is to fully, completely get rid of the work from the DBAs, uh, the so-called, uh, you know, the database administrators. And uh, we want to enable the database to tune the performance fully automatically. Uh, regarding the uh, index, for example, so, so the, the one, one of the core experiments we uh, conducted with this paper is through uh, index uh, recommendation. Uh, with the uh, very rapid advancement of, of, of machine learning and, or, or deep learning these days, or generally AI, um, uh, we think that uh, the reinforcement learning uh, RIO uh, is a very promising way to go. Um, so we can always like sort of like map this problem of like database uh, tuning uh, in an analogy of uh, doing like AlphaGo. So like AlphaGo is like you train an agent uh, either through like imitation learning or, or self-play uh, sort of to get a, a final policy where the policy is, uh, you know, good enough uh, to like uh, beat human players. Um, and the training of RL is like through uh, many, 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 many like a vast number of rollouts uh, where you kind of like having the current policy, which could be good um, or could be improved. Uh, you sort of like run a rollout based on the current policy and you see the turnout, like the, the, the result of that rollout, like in AlphaGo is like win or loss. And in like uh, database tuning is like, uh, what's, what is the cost? What is the, like the, 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 the true running time uh, of this query? And then based on that, uh, we would have like this uh, so-called Markov uh, uh, MDP or Markov uh, decision processes uh, to, uh, to reinforce a certain action where you want to uh, sort of like, you think that uh, could improve the performance of the overall system. Um, so that's like uh, why we think like are always the prom promising direction to go. And uh, I forgot to list out all the uh, references here, but we'll, we'll see some of that in the uh, experiment. There has been, uh, several works before uh, proposing like using um, RL to uh, do the database uh, the, to, 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 to solve the autonomous database mystery. Um, but the core challenge behind this is the sample complexity issue. Um, so namely the, the complexity of the samples, like uh, because it re requires too many number of samples. Like for AlphaGo, for example, it sort of like takes, um, I don't know, like in human time could be like several million of years to get a good agent. Uh, to get a good policy or good agent. Um, but for like doing like big databases, uh, we must consider that because um, in AlphaGo, you basically could do like, it, you can do it like, like in parallel and, and in simulation, right? Because uh, you basically have like uh, a policy, you just run it through the simulation, you get the result, you can have the reward. But for, for a database, especially like big databases, considering, because this is a web conf, uh, considering all like the, uh, the, the web, the web apps um, in current days, like pretty much like databases are behind that. And uh, given like the, the number of users are still rising these days, uh, it's huge. 
perhaps like uh, one third of the people in the world is on the on the internet. Um, so we must consider like the, the running time or the sample complexity. Uh, speaking of that, uh, we plot like uh, two exemplary uh, demonstration for the workload running time. And on the top, uh, we have a 10 million entries database. And on the bottom, uh, we have like a 1 billion entries. So we can see the um, unit of the horizontal um, access uh, that the running time of 1 billion database like takes 45 days and nobody can wait that long. So the problem, the real, the core problem behind this paper is that for large scale database, when we want to achieve a full autonomy using reinforcement learning and how can we reduce this overhead? And uh, slightly more uh, specific, uh, we want to ask these three questions. So what if we don't train our policy model or the Q function model or like any neural network model involved in uh, the RL framework in on the uh, original database uh, because we cannot afford that? What if we only sample a database from the original one? So what is what 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 would be the difference between them? And the second question we ask is that how can we guarantee that the model trained on this sampled much smaller database is well adopted to the original database? And the last one is that uh, what if we perform like a model transfer, um, we design one, and that incurs like very high precision loss because of all like the noises or the prediction uh, distribution drift um, in the sampling procedure, and how can we address that problem? So the motivation, um, the first one involves the sampling. Um, so what if the what if uh, training the policy network? Uh, I'm sorry, like how to train like, the policy network on a sample database, and how how do we do the sampling? What is the sampling policy uh, towards mitigating um, the unignorable noises or the prediction drifting? And then how can we adapt the model to the original database? So this is like a very uh, brief framework that we have for the so-called framework. We call it uh, mirror. So if we look at this plot, uh, we have like a target workload and we first do the sampling and the sampling will go to the top where we have like a neural network model. And with the, uh, on the, on the right-hand side uh, with like heavy interaction between the, uh, with the DBMS, the uh, database management system, and we get like uh, all the performance, the statistics, and, 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 and we sort of like formulate that into the proxy of reward. And then we use like reinforcement learning to train this policy. And after that, uh, we have a little arrow down below uh, uh, with uh, the name transfer on it. So we, we basically want to transfer the model uh, to uh, get it adapted to the original much bigger database. And uh, that procedure we call it, or that phase, the learning phase, we call it continuous learning. So basically we would uh, uh, get a, a little more samples uh, from the original database, uh, which may not lie in the uh, sample database. And we use those samples to do like a fine tuning or, or like a continuous learning or incremental learning to get the final one. And this one has a little theoretical analysis, which I think I wouldn't have time to present in this talk um, to sort of like the guide the continuous learning phase. So um, slightly going into the method, uh, we would take the index recommendation task as example. So this task, the goal of this task is to figure out which of the columns should be indexed to accelerate the query. And, um, uh, what what type of implementation is it, it? What kind of implementation should be uh, used to uh, to uh, for for the the, the index? Uh, could it be like a hash map? Could it be like uh, a B tree or or anything else? So that's that's like uh, uh, more or less like a hierarchical classification problem. Uh, so the core of that is a Q function construction. Um, we basically have three pieces of the neural networks to facilitate that. The first one is the workload feature network uh, where it consider like all the normal operators from SQL, like uh, select, uh, join, uh, et cetera. Um, like if we have like column three uh, joining column one, uh, we would put like 0 0.5 as an indicator in the workload feature networks uh, input. 
And then the work, workload uh, feature network uh, would uh, perform like, uh, I believe it was a convnet, like a like convolutional neural network uh, to uh, get a sort of like embedding. Um, and we also have like an index feature network where uh, down below we could see like there is a vector representing that, like figuring out if the, you know, the column one exists already being indexed and the type of that currently. And then we have a, a fusion network where we kind of merge the representations. And uh, right, sorry. So this this uh, this slide shows up like the sort of like the first phase of, of learning on the sample database, and the second phase following that is a continuous learning uh, phase or incremental learning phase, where we first uh, we would locate the outliers for the transfer model. And we want to tune the model with a new branch. Uh, speaking of new branch, we can take a look at the plot. So we basically have a feature network followed by a fusion network. And uh, the feature network is extracted or spit out from the workload feature network and the index feature network uh, after a concatenation operation. With the fusion network, when we do the transformation, we would double up all the, uh, the parameters or the, the neural network architectures uh, on the bottom side where we would um, have like a separate branch. And during the fine tuning, we only train the, uh, the, the branch that we uh, newly initiated and, and uh, the parameters are not shared, but initialized with the, um, the, the parameters that, that are trained from the uh, sample database in the first place. Uh, well, so this is a little bit of theory. I uh, understand the slide is a little uh, like a monster, but uh, basically, what I want to say is uh, the robustness of the system. The first piece is we have to handle the noise during sampling. So we derive a lower and an upper bound uh, on the uh, bottom right. Uh, so every sample we have, we would test it. If it falls out, uh, we consider it as a noise. And otherwise, we could uh, uh, do the following uh, procedure. And the second part of that is the normalization of the reward. So basically, the goal of that is to guarantee the model returns the consistent prediction results from both the uh, database, the original database, on the sample database. Uh, without going too much details, uh, we would estimate this term in the red uh, rectangle. And uh, uh, ideally, I would say this term uh, should. Uh, be a linear function regarding to the sampling ratio, but in fact, it's not. During our experiment, it's not. It's absolutely not uh, because like there are multiple joint operations involved. So directly estimated is extremely hard. So we basically choose to estimate this ratio, uh, which turned out to be a legitimate um, solution. So last piece is a little experiment. Um, so what we have uh, here is, uh, Sorry. Uh, so basically, we want to compare Miro with the previous work as well as the, uh, our own baseline, uh, which is just pretty much a randomized uh, indexed uh, uh, baseline. And Persona and Lyft are two uh, reinforcement learning power baseline that are published uh, published previously. And we also have like a, uh, some uh, notations on the slide, which I don't think I have time to go through that. Um, but here uh, we can see that on the table on the uh, on the upper side uh, on a one billion database. Uh, so sadly, that Miro takes like uh, forty five days to converge uh, per uh, v one hundred. Um, but lift the previous work uh, couldn't uh, do the convergence. Uh, as well, uh, we also compare the persona on the bottom right hand side. Um, and there are more experiments showing up in our paper that. Um, I choose uh, to not put, put in the slides. So the conclusion is here, I think we made an attempt to um, resolve the problem of sample complexity or the training overhead um, that uh, paves the way towards the uh, autonomous database, uh, especially handling the, you know, the, the, the large scale ones. And we also like, have like certain theoretical bounds. Uh, these theories, uh, we hope it to uh, enact where uh, during the continuous learning phase, uh, this technique could help to confine the model uh, on the original database, but not training it on the original database. And the experiment demonstrates something. Um, so I think that's it. Thank you.